Thank you for listening to The Shoulder School. This information was put together by the Surgical and Rehabilitation Team at Southlake Regional Health Centre to help give you some details about your upcoming surgery and how you can best prepare for it. We'll start with a brief overview of shoulder anatomy to familiarize you with some of the terms that might be used by your medical team and then give you some information so that you know what you can expect during and after surgery. We'll start with a brief overview of shoulder anatomy. Our first anatomy slide shows you the bony structures of the shoulder. The humerus or long arm bone, the scapula or shoulder blade, and the clavicle or collarbone. The next slide is a picture of the labrum. Your shoulder is a ball and socket joint and the labrum is a ring of cartilage that acts like a seal keeping that ball and socket in place. The next slide shows you the muscles of the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that provide stability to the shoulder. They act like the core muscles of the shoulder and they need to be working well in order for the large muscles to also function well. Poor strength or a tear in one or more of these muscles can cause pain or impact your function. Many of you will be having your shoulder surgery done via arthroscopy. That involves three small incisions, one at the front, one at the middle, and one at the back of the shoulder through which the repair is performed. Very often the surgeon removes a bursa. The bursa is a normal fluid-filled sac that protects our bony surfaces, and sometimes this bursa becomes damaged with injury. It will regrow just like your fingernails and hair as your shoulder heals. The undersurface of the collarbone, which may have small bone spurs or wear and tear, will also be smoothed out. A rotator cuff repair is one of the surgeries done via arthroscopy. In this surgery, one or more of the torn rotator cuff muscles is reattached to the bone using a small anchor and sutures. It takes a minimum of eight to 10 weeks for that muscle to heal, so it's very important to protect this muscle by resting your shoulder during that time. Oftentimes, the bicep tendon is also affected when you've had a shoulder injury or muscle tear, and that may also be repaired. If this is the case, then the therapist and the surgeon will advise you as to what precautions need to be taken about using your bicep muscle after surgery. Another of the arthroscopic surgeries is a labral repair, also called a stabilization. This restores the seal of the labrum that has been torn as a result of dislocating your shoulder. Sometimes there is a tear in the seal at the front or anterior portion of the shoulder, sometimes at the back or the posterior portion, and sometimes at the top or the superior portion. Or there may be various combinations of these. It's very important that you see your surgeon and physiotherapist after surgery in order to understand what was involved in your particular surgery so that you understand what movements are safe or unsafe for you. Open shoulder surgeries are done through one incision at the front of the shoulder. Included in these are Latarge reconstructions, Weaver Dunn reconstructions, and on the next slide, shoulder replacements. If you are having a Latarge or a Weaver Dunn reconstruction, Dr. Randall will have discussed with you what's involved in these surgeries. For shoulder replacement surgery, he will also have discussed with you whether you're a candidate for a total shoulder or a reverse shoulder. In both cases, the arthritic areas are removed and replaced with artificial components. Now we're gonna talk about preparing for surgery. It's important to arrange for someone to stay with you for the first 24 hours after surgery. You'll be in a sling and you'll need help doing things like opening your medication bottles, getting comfortable, getting meals, etc. It's also important ahead of time that you prepare some meals in advance that are easy for you to prepare with one arm. The sling is intended to be worn for 24 hours, seven days a week, so you may want to have help with your meal preparation or have meals again that you can manage to do with one arm. You'll need to arrange for assistance for the things that you normally do around the house. Watering plants, walking dogs, or taking care of anybody else who depends on you. 
Our next slide is covering what to bring with you to the hospital. Bring a large, comfortable, loose-fitting top. Your sling will be put on at the end of surgery while you're still asleep and the staff will dress you in that large top over the top of your sling. Also make sure we have your emergency contact information and your medication and allergy list up to date. Please do not bring anything valuable or large sums of money with you. The next few slides will discuss what to expect after surgery. Most people are discharged home the same day of the operation. In some cases, you might be admitted overnight for monitoring, but your surgeon will have told you if that applies to you. Taking care of your incision. Arthroscopic surgeries are covered with three layers of bandages. The first layer is a puffy white bandage. The second layer is a thin gauze dressing, and the third layer is called Steri-Strips. That first puffy bandage can be removed on the second day after surgery. The day of surgery is considered day zero, and so that bandage can be re removed on the second day after surgery. The second layer can be removed on the fourth day after surgery. However, that is also the day that you're allowed to take your first shower, and we want you to leave that gauze dressing in place until after you shower. After you've showered and pat it dry, then it can be removed. The third layer of Steri strips that are directly over each incision will start to naturally peel by themselves as you shower as per your normal routine. And usually by about the 11th day, you can remove those. For open shoulder surgeries, like total shoulder replacements or latarges, your incision is covered by a waterproof bandage and that can be removed after eight to 10 days. All incisions are closed using dissolvable sutures, so there's no need for staple or suture removal. Your sling. The sling that we use is called an ultra sling. You'll be asked to wear this constantly, 24 hours, seven days a week for the duration of four to six weeks on average. The video accompanying this slideshow will show you the ideal way to have the sling positioned as well as how to safely take your sling on and off. The sling is only to be removed for the exercises that your therapist has prescribed and to do personal hygiene. When you wake up from surgery, your sling will be on. It's important to know what the correct position of your sling should be because it's sometimes tricky to get it on just perfectly well while you're um, asleep in surgery. So ideally, we'd like the sling positioned so that the knuckles of your hand are inside the sling. We don't wanna have the wrist dangling and hanging over the front of the sling. Your elbow should be all the way at the back of the sling, and it should be snug enough that you feel you can relax your arm into the sling. We don't wanna have to have you feeling like you have to support the weight of your arm. As well, the front of the sling should essentially be to the right side or left side of your navel, depending on which shoulder you had done. So we don't need it so far forward that it's covering um, your stomach, and nor do we want it behind you so that it's putting too much strain on the front of the shoulder. The next thing is the angle of the sling. We'd like it to be really just parallel to the floor. So we don't wanna see the sling you know, push back this way so that the elbow is higher than the hand, okay? Ideally, your hand should be even a little bit higher than your elbow. And the last thing is that sometimes as you're getting um, dressed, undressed, etc., sometimes this wedge flips onto its side. So the curved part of that wedge of your sling should be against your waist. Okay, so taking your sling off. Um, as you remember, we want to make sure that you're really um, observing the precautions and not moving your upper arm away from your body or not moving your forearm away from your stomach. So the safest way to do this is by resting your arm on a table. Uh, the best surface for this is probably your bathroom or kitchen counter. That might be a little higher than the table that I'm at right now. But wherever you are, you are what you're going to do is lean forward and rest your arm down on that stable surface. 
From there, you can loosen the straps. The waist strap comes off like a seat belt. Then you can take the thumb strap off, the forearm strap, and then the easiest way to deal with the neck strap is just loosen it off and pull it over your head. If you unclip it, that's okay, but it's a little difficult to clip it back together with one hand and you are at the risk of pinching your fingers. So the easiest way is just to slip it over your head. Once you've done that, you take your whole arm, including the sling, come up away from the table, and then from here, you're just going to try and lean forward, and then your other arm can slowly and gently slide that sling off, and your arm will just dangle safely downwards. Next, we will talk about the restrictions as far as moving your shoulder and arm. This is probably the most important information because ignoring or not being aware of these guidelines could damage the repair. It's important that you don't move your arm away from your body. That includes moving your arm in a forward direction, a sideways direction, or a backward direction. It's also important that you don't lift your forearm off your stomach. So even at times when your sling is off, for example, for showering and for dressing, you want to allow your arm just to rest at your side. You should avoid prolonged writing, computer, or cell phone use, as even these micro movements of your hand and forearm can affect the healing of your repair. Our next slide is about sleeping positions. This is probably one of the most common complaints that we hear from shoulder patients, and it's very understandable because it's very difficult to find a comfortable position and to fall asleep. The best advice we have is to be in a reclined position. That could be using a recliner chair or using pillows or a wedge support behind you in bed. You'll also want to use some pillows or cushions to support under your arm or behind your shoulder in order to maintain the optimal sling position while you sleep. Personal care. As mentioned, for the arthroscopic surgeries that are covered with the three layers of bandaging, we'd like you to sponge bathe only for the first three days. On the fourth day after surgery, you can remove your sling, let your arm rest at your side, and shower as per normal. You can then shower as per your normal routine. For shoulder replacements, latarge surgeries, etc., where there is a waterproof dressing, you can shower whenever you're comfortable. We would like you to avoid immersing your shoulder in water. So that means no pools for three weeks and no hot tubs for six weeks. Getting dressed. It's best to wear an oversized t-shirt. You can also wear a shirt that buttons up or zips up, that's also fine. In any case, you're gonna to want to bend at the waist and dangle your arm downwards. Pull your sleeve on your operated arm first without moving it. And while you're still bent over, bring the shirt over your head and put the other sleeve on. You're gonna to wanna to put a shirt on under your sling. That makes it a lot more comfortable to be dressed underneath the sling. It helps to reduce chafing, etc. So you're gonna take your shirt You're going to gather it up so you can get the sleeve. Okay, and here I have my sleeve. Again, I'm going to just lean forward, pull that sleeve onto my hand without moving my arm. I'm going to bring that up over my head. and then stand up and arm goes through the other side. Okay, once you're dressed, then it's time to put the sling back on again. So we're gonna do the reverse of what we did to get it, to get it uh, off. So, holding that neck strap, or wherever is easiest for you to grab. You're going to lean forward again, slide your hand through the front of the sling, try to position your elbow at the back of the sling, you can lift your arm, come back onto the counter, 
slide yourself down, bring the neck strap, got it caught. bring the neck strap up over your head. You can do your other straps up from here. And then from there you can stand, you can reach around for the waist, clip it back in. Whoopsie. And then tighten your neck strap once more. Okay, do any adjustments that you need to be comfortable. And there you have it. The next slide is about driving. Do not drive while you're in the sling. Driving cannot begin until you're allowed to move your shoulder on its own without the sling. And that timeline varies depending on the type of surgery you've had. So Dr. Randall will discuss with you at the six week follow-up when it's safe for you to return to driving. This is also one of those areas that you'll need to plan ahead for any transportation that you're gonna need to arrange to work or any other appointments. The next few slides discuss pain control. After surgery, you will be given pain medication. It's important you take this medication to control your pain and participate in your rehabilitation. Many patients feel they don't need the pain medication on that first day because they feel relatively comfortable due to the anesthetic. However, it's important that you take it every four to six hours because skipping a dose can mean that your pain is very severe later on. This next slide shows you a pain scale from zero to 10. We wouldn't expect after surgery that you'd have no pain or a zero, but nor do we want you to be in the severe range of pain, eight or 10. By taking your pain medication, the hope is that you can keep your pain in the mild range from a one to a three. Other things that you can use to help with pain include ice or gel packs. Important that you don't put these directly on your skin, but that you use a protective layer, a towel, or a, a t-shirt between um, you and the ice pack. Some people may also choose to use a cryo cuff, which is an ice um, machine that can be used for longer periods of time. If you're interested in this, Dr. Randall's office can direct you to uh, the vendor that they use. As far as your follow-up visits with Dr. Randall, your first visit in the shoulder clinic will happen on the first Thursday after your surgery. After that, typical follow-up is at six weeks, at 12 weeks, and then at six months after surgery. Again, plan ahead for transportation to your six-week appointment, as for many of you, you will not be driving at that point. Patients who live a distance away from South Lake can have their initial shoulder clinic appointment through the OTN network, where you go to your local hospital and we do a video visit with you. However, for the six week, 12 week, and six month follow-ups, we will want to see you in person. Physiotherapy. The physiotherapist will see you on the first Thursday after your surgery in the shoulder clinic with Dr. Randall. At that visit, we will help you with removing your bandage, help you with fitting your sling comfortably, answer any questions that you have, and also make arrangements for your ongoing rehabilitation. You can arrange your physiotherapy at any clinic that is convenient for you, and we ensure that you have a copy of our post-op rehabilitation protocol that we provide for both you and the therapist who'll be treating you. If you choose to do your rehab at South Lake, we'll arrange for your follow-up visits at that time. If you are doing your rehab at South Lake, you can arrange to purchase a parking pass, which will make the parking fees a little more manageable, hopefully. You can arrange this through the parking office. The recovery timeline. It takes up to one year for your shoulder to feel really good and strong. The first six weeks are the rest phase. The next six weeks are what we call the reactivation phase. And then from 12 weeks on is strengthening and returning to regular function. It's important to follow the guidelines of the physiotherapy team and the surgeon to do your exercises regularly, to not move ahead in doing exercises too soon. 
it's also important to remember that your recovery includes both mental and physical components. So remaining calm, remaining positive, maintaining gentle, enjoyable activities like walking will help with your mental health and your healing. Thank you for tuning in to Shoulder School. If you have any questions, please contact us at shoulderschool at southlakeregional.org and one of the therapists will be sure to get back to you. Thank you.